Hey everyone, today we're gonna to look at a completely new way to think about your AI coding partner. I mean, what if instead of just having a single assistant, you could become the lead of your own specialized AI team? We're gonna dive into how this approach can totally change the game for tackling complex coding challenges. Let's get into it. So does this sound familiar? You've got this super powerful AI coding partner, right? But it feels like you're constantly feeding it the same context over and over again for different tasks. It's great for simple stuff, for sure. But when it comes to a big, hairy job like a major refactor or hunting down a really tricky bug, it just feels like you're starting from square one every single time. Well, guess what? There's a much better way. And this slide really nails the core shift in thinking. We're moving away from the old way, the single generic agent that's okay for simple things, but really struggles with anything complex. The new way, the new workflow, is all about building a dedicated team of specialized experts. Each one gets its own focus context, its own custom tools, and that's what lets you tackle much, much bigger challenges. Yeah, so this isn't just some minor feature update we're talking about. It's a genuine paradigm shift. We're moving from just, you know, prompting an AI to actually assembling and managing your very own custom-built AI development team. You're the lead now. And the feature that makes all of this possible is called Claude Code Subagents. Just think of them as specialized AI agents that you build and you direct. So instead of that one jack of all trades, you're creating a whole roster of experts, your own team of minions, if you want to call them that, each one designed for a very specific job. The real power of these sub-agents comes down to three key things, three pillars. First, you get to define custom roles. You give each agent specific expertise right in its system prompt. Second, each agent gets its own dedicated context. Think of it like a focused memory, so they don't get sidetracked by irrelevant info. And third, you equip them with specialized tools, giving them access only to what they need to get their job done right. All right, so theory is great, but let's see how this actually works in practice. We're going to meet a four-agent team, yep, we're calling them the Minions, to see exactly how they handle a real development workflow from start to finish. First up, let's meet Kevin. He's the architect, the master planner of the group. You don't go to Kevin for a quick little fix. You bring him in for the big, complex changes. The ones that require real strategic thinking and a solid plan before you even touch a line of code. Kevin's process is just incredibly thorough. He is hardwired to plan everything out first and get your approval before he writes any code. He uses critical thinking tools to challenge ideas, and he can even debate with other models like Gemini to find the absolute best solution. Plus, he's got a tool to pull the latest documentation, making sure he's not using outdated patterns, all while keeping security top of mind. He's your strategic mastermind, for sure. But what happens when that beautiful plan hits a little snack? You know, a bug appears out of nowhere? That's when you call in the detective of the team, Bob, the debugger. Let's see how he gets to work. See, Bob is methodical. He doesn't just guess. He asks clarifying questions to really dig in and find the root cause. He's got these specialized debugger and tracer tools to follow the code flow. And if he thinks it might be a data issue, he can use a database tool to check its status directly. Then he proposes a small targeted fix and even suggests a test to make sure that bug is truly squashed for good. Okay, so a fix is in place, or maybe a new feature is built, but it needs to be checked before it goes anywhere. And that is where Stuart comes in. He is the meticulous code reviewer, the quality control gatekeeper of this entire team. Now, Stuart is awesome because he's trained on your project's specific standards and best practices. He's that crucial second set of eyes, catching improper framework usage or even critical security issues you might have missed. And here's a really cool thing. He's smart enough to discover and use new tools on his own, like finding a security audit tool when he's working on some authentication code. And finally, before anything ships, you need to know it actually works. So let's meet Dave, the QA automation engineer. His entire job is to validate everything from the user interface all the way down to the database. So Dave takes your requirements and designs a full test plan. He uses specialized tools to get it done, one called Playwright that writes scripts to simulate what a real user would do in a browser, and another to directly check that the database state is correct. And after all that, he gives you a crystal clear pass-fail report so you know exactly what works and what doesn't. So, okay, you get more efficient, more reliable code. That's the obvious benefit, right? But there's a deeper, kind of unexpected upside to working this way, and it's one that directly impacts you, the developer. There's a line from the source material on this that really just stood out. It says, sub-agents don't just help me get stuff done. They teach me. And that really captures it perfectly. 
This whole process isn't just about delegation. It's about observation and collaboration. It's a two-way street. I mean, think about it. As your agents suggest new frameworks or use different tools or apply design patterns you haven't seen before, you're constantly learning. Every interaction becomes this little professional development opportunity, helping you grow and expand your own skill set. It's an incredible side effect of this whole workflow. Feeling inspired? I really hope so. Because the best part is, you can start building your own specialized team right now. So let's just quickly walk through how you can become the team lead yourself. Getting started is actually super simple, right inside Claude Code. When you run the slash agents command, you'll see this nice, clean interface. It's designed to be totally straightforward, so you can get your first agent up and running in just a few minutes. And here it is, the whole four-step process. You run the slash agents command, you hit create new agent, you decide if it's for a specific project or for your general use, and then you define its personality. Give it a name, a clear description, that super important system prompt, and its specialized toolkit. That's literally it. And that brings us to the final question. Now that you've seen the power of having a specialized AI team, who are you gonna hire first? Will it be a security specialist, a UX slash UI expert, maybe a database guru? The possibilities here are absolutely endless.